When Wilma Rudolph Played Basketball by Mark Weekland, illustrated by Daniel Duncan. When Wilma Rudolph Played Basketball, published by Picture Window Books, a capstone imprint. During the 1960 Olympic Games in Rome, Italy, a young woman took her place next to the other runners at the starting line. The gun fired with a pop. Wilma Rudolph, a runner from the United States, surged forward. She was all power and fluid motion. Eleven seconds later, Wilma crossed the finish line first. She had won the gold medal in the women's 100-meter dash. It was the moment Wilma had imagined. She was no longer the sickest girl in Clarksville, Tennessee. She was the fastest woman in the world. Wilma Rudolph was born June 23, 1940. She was the 20th child in a family of 22 children. Because she was born almost two months early, Wilma was a tiny baby. She weighed just a little more than four pounds. Wilma's parents didn't know then that Wilma would one day become famous. Wilma was an energetic baby, but her early birth caused health problems. Wilma became sickly after her first year. By the time she was four years old, she had suffered through chicken pox, pneumonia, whooping cough, and scarlet fever. In the 1940s, racial discrimination made it hard for black people to get good medical care, so Wilma's mother cared for her at home. She piled on blankets and made hot drinks to help cure Wilma's illnesses. Wilma complained about her mother's remedies. All these blankets are making me sweat, she said, and your medicine tastes awful. Wilma eventually recovered from her illnesses, but something else was wrong. Wilma's mother took her to the doctor. After finishing his examination, the doctor spoke to Wilma's mother. I'm sorry, Blanche, he said. Your daughter has polio. The polio left Wilma's leg crooked and her foot turned inward. The doctor told them that Wilma needed a leg brace. The doctor says you won't walk without that brace, Wilma said her mother, but I know you will. I believe you, Mama, said Wilma. Twice a week, Wilma and her mother took a bus to a medical college 50 miles away. There, Wilma received physical therapy for her leg. Spending so much time trying to get well was tough on Wilma. She couldn't play with the other children. By the time she was seven years old, Wilma was fed up, but she was also determined. No more taking what comes. Enough is enough. Wilma imagined herself walking and running without her brace. Most importantly, Wilma followed her imagination with action. She did exercises, she took off her brace, and she practiced walking without it. I'm going to be healthy, just like the rest of them, she said to herself. Soon, Wilma could walk well enough to go to school. Finally, she said, a place where I can be with the other kids. As she grew older, Wilma realized how difficult life was for most African Americans. She saw racial discrimination everywhere. Segregation meant that black people couldn't do the same things as white people. They had to use separate drinking fountains and bathrooms. They even had to sit at the backs of buses. Wilma also noticed how hard her own mother worked as a maid and a cook. There's something not right about all this, Wilma thought. White folks got all the luxury, and we black folks get the dirty work. Wilma became determined to do something other than serve white people. At age nine, Wilma took a huge step forward. One Sunday, Wilma's parents held open the church door for her, as they always had. Hold on, Wilma said. There's something I have to do. Wilma took off her brace outside, then she propped her crutches against the wall, opened the door, and walked inside. Wilma limped down the aisle. People watched as she walked by. One woman even yelled out. Wilma beamed and kept on walking. 
By the time she was 12 years old, Wilma's brace was off for good. For years, she had watched other children play on the playground. She had studied girls playing basketball and memorized their moves. Now she was determined to be on the basketball team. She thought to herself, Wilma, tomorrow, tomorrow you're going to see what it feels like to play a little basketball. Wilma signed up for the basketball team, but for the first few years, she didn't get much playing time. Coach C.C. Gray only put her in at the end of a game when her team was sure to win or sure to lose. But Wilma was determined. She practiced hard, sometimes for hours a day. Coach Gray jokingly called her Skeeter. You're little, you're fast, and you always get in my way, he said. Before her fourth season, Wilma continued buzzing like a Skeeter. Coach Gray, she said, if you put as much time on me as you do on some of these other girls, I'd be a star player on this team. Her persistence paid off. Right before the first game that year, Coach Gray put Wilma in as a guard. Burt High School, Wilma's team, hosted a tournament that season. During one game, Wilma scored 32 points, and Burt High had a new star, Wilma Rudolph. Wilma was a star basketball player, but her talent was running. I love the feeling of freedom in running, she said. When Ed Temple, the track coach at Tennessee State University, saw Wilma playing basketball, he was impressed. She was a small teenager, but she had amazing speed and focus. Coach Temple invited Wilma to join his sports training camp. There she trained with the university's women's track club, the Tiger Bells. The Tiger Bells were already famous for winning Olympic medals in 1952. Wilma would add to their fame. While in high school, she ran with them in the 1956 Olympic Games. The USA's four-woman relay team was made up of Wilma and three other Tiger Bells. Together, the women earned a bronze medal in the relay race. Now that she had a taste of victory, Wilma was determined to do better. She wanted to be standing on the gold medal platform at the next Olympic Games. Four years later, she achieved that goal. Afterward, Wilma's greatest accomplishment came in the 1960 Olympic Games in Rome. First was the 100-meter dash. No one could beat her blazing speed. Wilma ran away with her first Olympic gold medal. Next came the 200-meter dash. The crowd in the stadium knew of Wilma's recent win. Now they were rooting for her. Wilma! 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 They chanted. The starting pistol fired and Wilma leaped forward. Twenty-four seconds later, she crossed the finish line. She had won a second gold medal. Wilma also ran the last leg of the 400-meter relay race, and the U.S. team won. The Olympic crowd went wild. Wilma Rudolph was the first American woman to win three gold medals in track and field in a single Olympics. Once unable to walk without crutches, Wilma was now the fastest woman in the world. She was also quite famous. Wilma retired from her track career in 1962. She became a teacher, a high school coach, a mother to four children, and even a fashion model. She died at age 54 of a brain tumor. Wilma was an inspiration to thousands of athletes, especially young women. She taught young people everywhere that even when the odds seem to be against them, they can achieve great things. <laughs>